Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Glenn Johnson. This is their part number 103S. Not that you can see that label. 103S. This is an overhead stop, uh, is what this is. There are, regardless of who the manufacturer is, there are different applications of overhead stops, meaning the ways they are applied to the opening changes. Um, which means that they are either surface mounted or concealed. There are different versions of surface mounted. Um, there are in each of those different categories, there will be different grades, light duty, standard duty, heavy duty, that sort of concept. There will be different functions, hold open, friction, and stop. Um, there will certainly be different finishes, and then there will be accessory hardware that will go along with all of that material. The one thing that people would say about overhead stops is that you cannot template them past 110 degree. Uh, so be mindful that if you're doing an opening with an overhead stop, you would only ever get 110 degree as a maximum. Uh, templates uh, that you'll see online will stop at 110 degree. Another important thing about overhead stops is to, uh, something that not everyone knows, is to be mindful to order them according to any sort of specialty hardware that you have installed. Hinges. So if you're doing just typical butt hinges or offset pivots, you'll want to think about the hanging device. A particular example would be using overhead door stops with concealed hinges. To name a few brands would be Sauce or Tectus or Sugatsuni. The vertical axis of pivoting of a concealed hinge isn't like an imaginary plumb line or a vertical axis of pivoting going through the barrel of a hinge or a pivot. That line doesn't ever move, but with a concealed hinge, uh, that vertical axis of pivoting actually arcs through the opening. So when you order your overhead stops, regardless, you have to order it specified for the hanging device because the hardware may or may not change. The hardware is not going to change, but what will possibly change will be the template that you get with the material and where everything has to be prepped and mortised uh, or, or mounted if it's surface mounted. So be mindful. Those are the two caveats or cardinal rules really about overhead stops. And after that, overhead stops are the best, absolute best way to um, give control to the door in terms of its degree of swing. There are other pieces of hardware that want to do it or maybe are intended or inclined to do it or marketed as it, such as crash chains, door closer arms, but none of those are neither of those are intended to act as a absolute stop, okay? Um, a door closer arm with a dead stop, that's awfully nice. Um, but you're likely going to see information in that manufacturer's catalog that says, this is not, to, not, to, not meant to be your dead stop. You know, this is meant to go along with, you know, auxiliary hardware like an overhead stop. So be mindful uh, of all of that. Overhead stops are not used nearly as often as they should be. And it's because they cost money um, in both material and labor to install them or prep or mortise them. They're simple devices. They're basically a couple of slide tracks. And the prep is simple as well. If you can mortise a latch bolt, you can mortise the plate for the overhead stop on the frame. If you can mortise a mortise lock, if you can prep for a mortise lock, you can do the body that goes in the top of the door. And then there's just one other thing you have to do to account for the preparation for an overhead stop, and that is to cut the face of the door away so that the track can actually slide out of the face of the door, which you don't see at all when the door is closed. So I think a lot of people, you know, people will ask me to write a hardware set and... Yeah, overhead stops are included in, in the hardware set. Exterior, three foot six, eight zero exterior door, service entrance in Manhattan, 14 gauge door and frame, overhead stop. That's going to be part of the hardware set. 
Oh, they don't want to use those. Okay, what are you going to do to stop a 3680 14-gauge hollow metal door? And then, you're, and then you are going to apply to that door 12-gauge stainless? <laughs> okay, what's the plan? How are we stopping this door? The wind grabs it. It's going to be a problem. Um... So I, I do encounter a general level of malaise when it comes to the product. Maybe as a lack of familiarity. And then there'll be applications where they ought to be used and they're not used because there's no money for them or the door supplier literally can't prep for them. They, they don't know how to do it. They've never done it. They don't want to learn how to do it. And they can't do it. So we're not doing it. I did a project, a, re a high-end residential project, coincidentally in Manhattan, and we did overhead stops, you know, petite overhead stops with sauce hinges, and it looked great. And why did I specify overhead stops? Well, you've got, you have a bedroom door that opens into the bedroom, and as you go in the bedroom and close the door, behind that, okay, is sliding doors, um, closet doors. Everything in Manhattan is very, you know, compressed for space. Um, another application in that same job was a door opening into a, uh, a lavatory and the door could only go about 85 degrees before it was going to hit the commode. Okay, we want to stop that door so that it doesn't hit the commode. That would be another, and that door had, it was a 10 light French door, okay? So while the hardware set, was, I wrote the hardware set to include all that material, the hinges, the latch, latching hardware, etc., etc., the overhead stops, they were then not installed because the designer and the owner who completely agreed that they were required for the job could not get the door manufacturer to prep for them. Okay, So now we've got the possibility of doors hitting bifold doors. We've got 10 light French doors hitting commodes. Hinge pin door stops don't work for this kind of material. Uh, you've got a door that weighs 100 pounds, a little piece of bracket that mounts to a hinge pin um, is not stopping hardware. It's not intended for that. This sort of material is. But again, people don't gravitate toward, towards it initially because of that cost um, and the lack of familiarity with, with how is how what is actually a very easy uh, piece of equipment to actually install. So they're not, they're not difficult to install. You have different functions of this material. You can do an S for a stop. That means it's just a dead stop. Wherever you template it, it's going to stop. You have a hold. Um, the, back to the stop. You have a stop, and there will always be a little bit of mount, a little bit of, of degree beyond that stop because you have a spring that's going to bring that door to a stop and then be done with it. So be mindful of that. You have a holder, and that's obviously what the name implies, going to hold the door open. Then you have a friction style. A friction style is used you see them in hospital in hospital patient rooms on the bathroom doors inside of there those doors when you grab that door it actually takes some force to pull the door closed and to push it open that's because they have friction style overhead units on them because wherever they place the door wherever they wherever the user places the door the door will stay there it won't close it won't open It'll just stay in that position, which is what you want. You want to be able to take the door, move it, leave it there. I don't want it to move at all. Friction are used for that. You are not going to use a friction style. You're not going to use a hold open style on fire rated doors ever, period, end of sentence. Uh, they're not permitted. Um, they're, let's, let's, do a, let's do a visual review of the 103S that we have. The most common is the 104S, and the difference is the size of door that this material installs to. Um, a 103 is for a narrower door. What, that, what I'm trying to say is the length of the entire apparatus is directly related to the width of the door. Okay? Installation instructions, box, screw pack, installation instructions, then the gizmo itself. Let's take a look at the gizmo itself. A real simple piece of equipment here. I mean, nothing to be scared of at all. Okay, So this is what that's going to look like when you mount it up to the door. You're going to have your plate, your bracket that will go to the header, 
you'll have your arm, then you're going to have your track that will mortise to the top of the door. What I mentioned earlier, that, if, that you have to notch the face of the door, it's for this track to be able to move out as the door opens. That's all that that is used for. Okay. Now, let's take a little bit closer look at the item. Take a little closer look at this unit. So, this is literally the very large, substantial item that's going to mount into the header. This is, of course, the arm itself. And then this, this portion down here is, is certainly the slide track, which gets mounted in the top of the door. Okay, And these two large sets of springs are what I had mentioned earlier. But when the door really getting to the closed position, those springs are going to slightly compress, allowing you to um, substantially decelerate the door and then of course bring it to a stop okay that's what this is this unit um, was specified in stainless steel so this is um, it's not 100% stainless there are going to be ferrous components in it the exposed material is stainless that track is steel the springs are steel um, it is possible to get 100% or m substantially more non-ferrous components in the unit should you uh, should that be a requirement for you. So we've talked about an overview of the item. We've talked about you know navigating some of the waters of using it, and a little bit of a visual tour of the item. It's a really big arm, as you can tell. Let's put the tape measure on there. You know, inch and a quarter. The thing weighs 2.9 pound, so it's very substantial. And there's no doubt that you're going to see overhead stops in every high volume application. Uh, airports, movie theaters, sports stadiums, bus stations, etc. Uh, now, let's also take a look at the simple screw package here. We've got some machine screws, we've got some large wood screws as well. Okay. This will be able, this standard package will allow you to work with uh, either door type. The installation instructions that are included will also most definitely have a template. And that's the part that really so somewhat intimidates some people, but it's, I mean, it's really, really easy. Okay. Um, there's not a lot to these things. So what we're going to do is let's switch to the screen view so that we can go over the supporting documentations, cut sheet, installation instructions, uh, template. So let's do that now. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at and we are going to take a look at the manufacturer's cut sheet is what uh, will be here. There'll be three, there are three links below this video. Um, that describe uh, three links, the cut sheet, the template, and the installation instructions. The 100 series is their concealed overhead door holder and stop. So the manufacturer, Glenn Johnson, this image really does a great job at explaining the, the great job that they do. So what you've got here is an overhead concealed closer inside of here. You have a surface mounted overhead stop adapted to the opening. Okay, And Glenn Johnson is really great because they're able to work with you in terms of application compatibility. Making sure that all the parts that are on the door are going to work compatibly with each other. As you scroll through... Um, the full product catalog, should you look at that, you'll see the different types of mounting. And we are literally just dealing with concealed mount as we can see here. Okay, So let's get to the 100 series where we were before. Here we are. So the 100 series. is available again in a hold open model, a friction model, and a stop model. They come in six sizes. Options, which we'll go over uh, in a moment. Adjustable jam bracket, jam bracket, 
when you have this type of closer. Pin and socket security screw should you need those. These are non-handed. Will work with wood doors. They can work on single or double acting op openings. They are for interior or exterior. There is no substantial amount of uh, accommodation be beyond the standard that you would make for an overhead stop. Extremely durable. Improved corrosion resistance and function conversion kits are available, meaning that you can convert hold open to stop, stop to friction, and back and forth. Because what would happen in the old days is a client would call and say, yeah, I ordered a bunch of stop. They, the client would call and say, this doesn't hold open. No, you ordered the stop. It doesn't hold open. Oh, I need the hold open. Well, now it's been installed for a week, and the client doesn't really want to have to deal with ordering a new unit, but they will generally meet you halfway and order the conversion kit. Finishes are listed. Obviously, you're going to have exposed pieces of equipment, exposed parts of it that will have a finish, and this unit is 32D. Okay, Let's continue on with a detailed review of the different models that are available. Okay, so as we push through here, the, mod, the 100H hold open function should be used where it is desired to hold a door open at a predetermined position for short or long periods of time, permitting un unobstructed traffic flow through the opening. These models are both selective and adjustable, featuring the most reliable hold open mechanism available. There's a control knob which protrudes from the face of the door and turns the hold open function on or off. We're not doing an H in this video, but bringing it to your attention. Set in the inactive position, the unit acts as a stop and shock absorber. The tension on the hold open mechanism can be adjusted using an Allen wrench, which offsets um, air currents or other exterior conditions. The hold open tension adjustment is located in the bottom of the track in the top of the door. Um, so you'd be able to access that, they're saying, you know, when the door open is open. So the HP series internal hold open, hold open unit with the hold open mechanism built into the channel, reducing the door prep, and is a preset hold open that is not adjustable. The hold open feature is not selectable in these units, so the doors are always held open. So what that means is there are two kinds, selective hold open models and then non-selective, always going to hold open. Okay, So it's nice to be able to have the ability to turn that on and off, but of course the traditional hold open is just going to be the HP. Your friction series, we talked about that earlier. Hold open friction model models provide an alternative holding method, not hold open. Ideal for heavy patient doors, closet doors, or similar applications where multiple hold open positions are desired. The friction tension is adjustable using an Allen wrench and an open end wrench like a box wrench. The friction tension adjustment is located on the top of the slider channel. So what that means, again, if you have multiple points where you want the door to, to be pushed open, whether that be 30 degree you know, or whatever, you'll be able to accomplish it with a friction style. Then the good old fashioned S, when the hold open function is not required, the stop only function provides the same effective door control minus the hold open feature. The stop model can be used on fire doors. Okay, that's the crucial part. When stop-only models are used in conjunction with single-point hold-open electronic door closers, they may be ordered without the shock-absorbing mechanism. Used as an auxiliary stop with these closers, they will prolong the life of the closer. The stop location is adjusted using an Allen wrench on the stop lock located in the channel. So, the as I had said earlier, when you open that door to 90 degree, you could continue to push it because those springs will compress. But if you have a single point hold open electronic door closer, a, a manual, dumb, just a regular good old fashioned dumb hydraulic door closer, but it has some electronics on it that is keeping the door open until its detector tells the closer to release and then close. You don't want to have an extra five degree of spring power 
because you want the closer to hold the unit open. You don't want to permit your overhead stop a greater degree of ultimate opening than what your door closer will be providing. Okay, so you would want a true absolute dead stop when you are using a um, single point hold open electronic door closer and Glenn Johnson's sister company, LCN, will be able to supply you with that material. Okay. UL listed on the stop model only, as we said. You can continue to read all this. I don't know that it'll be necessary for us to read it here. Dead stop templating. If a wall or similar obstruction is in place at 110 degree or less, for instance, doors that open in a back-to-back, -back, dead stop templating should be used. And it's a in DHI class, it is a um, it's a it's a point of conversation where you have you have um, forgive the poor drawing. Okay, I think you get the point. And actually the class I was just in was exactly discussing when you're detailing hardware, you gotta really make sure, oops, when these doors are in the open position that when you're templating everything, that they don't come crashing into each other because the example that was given, this was a large, large area in a school leading into the cafeteria where there were, you know, these doors were maybe three foot six wide or whatever the case was, doesn't matter. But when these two doors open, you need to be very mindful of where you're templating and what hardware you're using so that they don't flex ever so slightly. And then boom, okay? Got some lever trim out here possibly. Okay, gonna need to really think about think about that when you're templating this material okay so that's I think where this is really coming into dead stop templating uh, you know and I think that the, that is a point that needs to be clarified because you could certainly template it for five degree less or thereabouts um, but I th you know and because knowing that it will slightly compress those springs when those doors come open, but I'm really thinking you're going to want to dead stop template those. That would be a question for the architect. This includes all hold open friction stop only models, except when the SE option, which we talked about earlier with your single point holder. If the example, if the door holder is templated at 100, dead stop. The door will hold open at any angle between 93 and 95, but no further than 100. Do not use dead stop templating on the 100 SE. We covered that. Environmental conditions should always be considered. Corrosive conditions constructed primarily of stainless steel or brass. Uh, and then for interior applications, sure, no doubt, sta uh, regular standard you know, ferrous-based steel is an option. Adjustable jam bracket, an adjustable option on the 100S series is the adjustable jam bracket, which allows the degree of hold open or stop angle to be adjusted after installation. The ADJ is available in all of these functions, and AD, ADJs are commonly sold. Um, I don't personally have a reason to use an adjustable model when the degree of opening has been defined. Um, but you can certainly understand how giving the client the ability to determine that in the field according to the use of the space would be advantageous. Closer jam bracket provides a special jam bracket when you've got that sort of closer, that LCN 5030. Okay. That's your special templating that Glenn Johnson will be able to help you with.
pin and socket security screw packages. Absolutely. If you're dealing with any possibility of any sort of tampering with anything whatsoever, you're going to want to put security screws into play on that material. Let's take a look at a brief sort of image of what the material looks like when it's installed. As we continue on and look at the cross section of the item here, we start to be able to understand uh, that it, it it might be a simple simple piece of equipment after all. And the cross section is probably the best way to start to wrap our head around it. You know that top plate, you know that's going to mount to the um, to the frame, okay? The, you know, they're showing it not mortised flush. Well, at least they're, they've drawn it to appear that way. Um, but at the same time, they're really not giving us any sort of requirement for accommodation in that regard. Um, you know, the bottom line is I would be installing that header portion flush is what I would end up doing. And I would make myself mounting tabs um, or I would make myself an offset, you know, mounting plate that would allow me to achieve that flush condition. But we're going to explore that more when we get to the installation template. So for right now, let's just, <clears throat> you know, not consider too much um, that this is a absolute, you know, accurate technical drawing. Um, it's, it's not. This is not a template. It just gives us an idea of what it looks like. And what's most important to illustrate is arm cut out on both sides. If the door is going to be double acting, your, you, your door is going to look like this for part of the top rail of the door, not the entire top rail of the door, just part of it. If your door is single acting, it will look like this cut out on the push side of the door for part of the top rail of the door, and we're going to discover that. So this does give a very good overview of what, of what it's going to look like when it's said and done. Um, sometimes I see templates from Ives or from Glenn Johnson or drawings that you know, there are no dimension lines on here, so we can't assume that that's not going to be flush, but it's it's going to be flush. But let's let's move let's move forward with this document. Over here is a plan view of what it will ultimately look like, and this little this gray area here here this gray line right here. That's where you have to make that accommodation because the slide track's got to move out and through the face of the door. So when you're looking at the door in elevation, um, it's going to look like this. You know, the dotted lines, you won't see any of that. That's all mortised in the door. And on our model, we won't see this lower area here. But you'll have to mortise the face of the door, whatever the dimension the template calls out, a quarter inch. However, when the door is closed, because your stop is going to be five eighths of an inch, you know th this drawing is not shown. This is not really a great drawing because the stop is going to come right here. You're you're never going to see any of that when the door is in the closed position, and no one's going to notice it when the door is in the open position. So, um, so anyway, there you go. You know that's what the hinge will look like when the door is open in ninety degree, etc. That's what our plate looks like. And again, this is not a this is not a, a machining template, but does allow us to understand what this is going to look like a little bit better. Now, the sizing chart is the first one that I refer to all the time when I'm, you know, not sure which one I need to order. It's the 100 series. You've got a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The only difference there is that it is related to the door opening. How wide the door opening? Not how wide your door is. What is the what is the 
nominal width of the opening. If it's a 3-0, which your door is going to be 35 and 13 sixteenths or 35 and 3 quarter, you're going to order a 104. So the, as I had said earlier, the 104 is the most common because it's for three foot doors. When you are dealing with um, butt hung, butts or offset hung doors. Okay, so be mindful. It's a bit of a trick. Center hung for a three foot door, you're going to use a 103 because a three foot door is a 103. And a center hung pivot is what they're referring to when you are going to center hang this would be butt or offset hung and a center hung pivot um, would require a different a different model and a different templating let's digress into a quick review of center hung and offset uh, pivots uh, butts we won't worry about but let's digress into that Now let's talk about center hung and offset pivots. Uh, what I'd like to do is to go to the Ives catalog and pull up what those different pivots look like. Ives is a sister company to Glenn Johnson under the Allegiant umbrella as we wait for that document to load or the page to load. Okay, so the manufacturer's page has loaded and let's pull up the current catalog. Let's search for a pivot. I'm just typing in a part number that I know. Um, now, let's see if they have an explanation of the difference between center hung and offset. So, when you're dealing with um, hardware that has to articulate, or there are pieces that are geometrically linked together, the vertical axis of pivoting is the reference point and I'm referring to obviously an overhead stop but also to a door closer knowing where that material is going to pivot is absolutely crucial um, okay so let's just take a standard pivot A 7226 is a very common pivot, even though it's for a little heavier door. So what, what it is that we're driving at is where the vertical axis of pivoting is located. The vertical axis of pivoting, and this is the uh, plan view, well, this would be a cross section of the door looking down in the floor, at the floor. And the vertical axis of pivoting is inside of here, okay? It's not drawn very well at all on the bottom pivot, but it's shown here very elegantly in the top pivot. So there are two sizes of pivots in terms of their offset, the dimension from the face of the door to the center line. And there's three quarter inch offset, and then there is half an uh, inch and a half offset, and an inch and a half. is the 7244 and the only difference is the dimension from the face of the door to the center line of the pivot okay coincidentally you may have noticed three quarter inch on the other pivot as well it's not the dimension from the edge of the door to the center line it's from the face of the door to the center line the reason there are two different types of pivots is because you then have the ability to account for when this door opens to the 180 degree position to account for any sort of clearance requirements here. So that's an offset pivot. The vertical axis of pivoting is offset from the face of the door, either three quarter or inch and a half. Those are the two sizes. Now let's find a center hung pivot. Here's a 7255, very common pivot, center hung pivot. Now what we notice here is the vertical axis of pivoting now is in the center of the thickness of the door. Okay, the the hardware is literally mortised in the in the door itself, rendering it all but concealed. This is what a cross section looks like, and that vertical axis of pivoting is now down through the center of the thickness of the door, and as a result, you have. Um, 
as a result, you have a requirement to generally bullnose the door, as seen here. Um, I'm not sure what they are showing here with this radius on something else behind here. I, I Sometimes Ives' drawings bewilder me. Um, uh, there's obviously a reason that's there. I don't know what that reason is. So the point of the matter is the center hung the center hung pivot, the vertical axis is right down the center of the door. Without dis explaining the difference and without fully understanding the difference, whether the pivot point is here on an offset pivot or it's here on a center hung pivot has everything to do with the hardware that you're going to select and how you're going to template it okay because of how that door is going to move whether it's going to move off of this vertical center line or this vertical center line affects that relationship um, totally affects that relationship so the how to order the sizing chart or how to order chart is the first chart that I always go to because it's impossible to keep all of these memorized all of these different part numbers because every uh, every series will have its own sizing chart and Glenn Johnson likely has eight different series or more who knows I, I don't recall but there's several so you have to always go to that sizing chart first so we've got a three well I don't know the size of the door but what I know is they ordered a 103 okay now we're going to talk about how that part number changes based on function Then the letter that you tack on after is going to, of course, give you your stop, hold, open, and friction function. So if you're going to be working with these variants, the HP or the SE, you're still going to use your same um, sizing chart. SE would be an S. HP, I think it was. H, S, E, and H, P, right? Mm -hmm. You use your same sizing chart. So this is going to be the first place you go to. This chart illustrates the most common types of hinging and door uh, opening sizes. For unusual door details, contact Glenn Johnson for availability. This is where you have to be very mindful to don't assume um, and ask because, you know, invisible hinges are not butts. Okay, they're not offset pivots and they're not center hung. So that would be an indication where you would reach out. These sizes are not available for use with offset pivots where they have the asterisk. Um, those doors get to be just simply too small. Um, for uh, offset pivots and. You know, unfortunately, there are limitations when it comes to the smallest door that you can do with a, with a unit. Um, so, so be mindful of that. Um, that. That trumps again. And you'll notice that if you were doing two foot doors that were center hung, they do not have a model for you. Okay, So you'll need to research further on if there is a unit, but that sizing chart is always your first stop. Would doors with automatic flush bolts or roller latches consult the factory. So what they're saying is also on these really narrow doors, there's too much hardware potentially happening in the door to fit an overhead uh, unit. Okay. The template information on this page is for reference and is not intended to serve as an installation template. We're going to say that they're referring to all of this. Okay. <laughs> like we talked about earlier. Uh, this moves into the um, how to order section, which every manufacturer has, an, has a how to order section. Uh, how do you build a part number? Okay, one zero, then your door size, your function, your finish, any options over here. And that is also, um, that this format is the most important page for any piece of hardware from any manufacturer whatsoever, every single time, because you want to detail the part number in the way in the format that the manufacturer states here why well 
They've built this so that we don't forget anything. Um, they've built, and even even though it's not complete, this is not complete because some products may be handed. Some products, you, you have to define your fastener package in all instances. You have to tell the factory what screws you want them to include. And there are proper abbreviations for fasteners that DHI can provide. Um, the hand of the item. So this is not necessarily all you need. You still would need potentially, um, for instance, if you were going to do Torx security screws, and I don't recall seeing that as an option, but it has to be an option for this. It must be. You're going to need to tell them the composition of the door and frame. So you're going to indicate your fastener package and the composition of your door and frame so that they can include that. Um, I don't, this obviously isn't handed, but you know, you would add your hand, but always getting it in the format that the factory wants to see not only permits you to detail it adequately and correctly so that all interested parties uh, have the information conveyed the, to them in a complete fashion, but also so the people at the factory know what you want. Some of them may be data entry people and not have spent decades you know, installing, servicing, troubleshooting, uh, selling hardware. They might just be entering stuff into a computer. Uh, and I don't know that that's the case, but giving it to them allows your order to get entered without uh, adding to the potential for delay. Um, so this is your product brochure. The next thing we're going to move to now is going to be, well, this is the cut sheet that we've already gone over. The next thing is to get to the template, and let's do so now. Okay, and now we move to the template and <clears throat> overhead stops or uh, holders or stops must be installed before the door closer. So DHI has a sequence and format that lists the order in which you define things on a hardware set, which also goes in lockstep with the order in which they're installed. The point is, is you need to get that overhead stop installed prior to putting a door closer. Otherwise, you're just going to have parts in the way <laughs> is the bottom line. Plus, you might install the closer to find out it's installed in the wrong location and you've not made an uh, accommodation for the overhead stop. So that's why that that's right at the very top of our, of our page. Now, determining the mounting being used from the illustration below, um, you do have to know whether it's center hung, offset hung, or swing clear. Don't be worried about swing clear. It's really the same as your offset pivot, except that the B dimension will be slight, will will be larger. Okay, so you have to just um, it'll be it'll come clear when we when we get to the table that we're looking at. Most continuous hinges are grouped with four and a half inch wide or four and a half inch swing clear. So continuous hinges, if they're standard, you're gonna use the four and a half inch wide. And if it's a swing clear, you'll use the swing clear portion of the table. And we're gonna to get to that in a moment. Using the mounting group number and the overhead holder or stop size and the degree of opening desired, you need to find the A, B, C, D, and E dimensions from the chart on page three. For dead stop, add 9 16 to the A dimension and that's going to give you the accommodation to adjust the location for you to have a dead stop. Remember when we talked back about the two pair of doors and the two inner doors would open to 90 degrees, but you did not want them to hit each other? You might want to dead stop that. Uh, note D for dead stop. Okay, so look at note D if you're doing a dead stop. So mounting group is what we have to determine from the table below, it said. This is the table below, okay? So how thick is your door? Inch and three quarter, two inch, two and a quarter. Okay, let's just, let's just skip right to it. Let's just say we're doing an inch and three quarter thick door. At this point, what am I using to hang the door? Am I using, let, let's just say, you know, the, I mean, we can pick offset, Three quarter offset pivot, four and a half inch wide butt, wide, four and a half inch wide butt hinge, group two, uh, group two, swing clear is also group two, center hung is group three, a five inch wide butt is group one. Let's just say we're dealing with group two, okay? 
And that's going to come into play when we get down to this really troublesome looking table. But it's not. Okay, so let's go back. We know that we're dealing with group two. We know that we have to ultimately find our A, our B, our C, our D, and our E dimensions. Once you know what all of those are, this is if you are if you're a carpenter and you work with a router, the rest is the rest the rest will soon be in your rearview mirror. It'll be easy. Let's just look at the notes though. You always want to read these notes. Hollow metal frames should be properly reinforced with a 3 16 minimum thickness by 12 inch minimum length plate. So when they are what they're saying here is when you have your when you have your hollow metal frame, okay, when you prep for that big nasty arm that's going to sit in here, they're telling you that you want they want it to be three sixteenths minimum thickness, twelve inch long. So really, what's going to happen is they want probably a piece of steel that's going to look like this. If I'm looking at it from this perspective, that's going to be 3 three sixteenths minimum thickness, 12 inch long. Okay, 3 sixteenths. And then you're going to drill and tap your holes. The factory will. And this is where your plate's going to sit, right in here. So you, so the bottom line is, you're using this piece of equipment to dead stop a 150-pound a, a door with environmental forces acting on it. That's why you need a really thick and long piece of material that's been adequately um, welded to the frame. Hollow metal doors should be properly reinforced with a 3 16 minimum thickness plate. Um, that would be more like a mounting plate is what's going to have a mounting uh, uh, a mounting pl uh, uh, plate, a mounting bridge, uh, a piece of steel that's going to basically kind of just look like this. Um, and we'll have, you know, whatever holes are needed for the equipment, okay? And it will look like like this, basically. Um, to get your hardware attached, actually, it's probably going to look like this. Okay, with your tapped holes here, and then your your track is going to sit in here. So that's what you know. Then your, your top of the door is going to be here. Stop only units are permitted on many fire door applications. However, mechanical hold open devices that require manual release are not permitted for use on fire doors as outlined by NFPA 80 and very possibly one of uh, the fire the the NFPA 101 is the life safety standard NFPA 80 is the fire safety standard um, and it's very likely <clears throat> that it will be thoroughly uh, not permitted for your application because these documents would be referenced in your local building code dead stop templating should not be used on SE models. We talked about that. The initial degree of stop will be five to seven degree less than the DS opening for use on doors being back to back, like we had talked about earlier, against a wall or obstruction. So when you cannot suffer a door to go any further, you're gonna to need to template it for a dead stop. <clears throat> Hold open adjustment, we won't go over that. Friction adjustment, we're not doing those, so we're not gonna to touch on that. Now this is important to know here what screws are included. I'm doing a couple of overhead door holders from a different manufacturer and they cannot provide Torx screws and the client must have security screws. So I obtained the list of the screws that are going to come with that package and I'm simply ordering them with a Torx drive. So not a problem, not a problem at all. Locate B dimension on frame. Note the B dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge as shown. So the B dimension is the same dimension that you're going to kind of, is is what you're going to use when you're dealing with a door closer, which means 
the vertical axis of pivoting, the center of the barrel of the hinge. Um, and, you know, and again, these drawings can be a little confusing. This leaf, this leaf shows the door in a 90 degree position. Um, but from the center line of the rotating axis of the hardware is where you're referencing your B dimension to the center line of your of your of your vertical axis of pivoting. That's the same concept as any door closer. So that's going to be your B dimension, and we're going to get that from our table. Remember, we're doing a four and a half inch or a three quarter off offset pivot, but we're in mounting group two. So note that the B dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge. Mortise the jam bracket as shown. Refer to left and right hand plan views for appropriate hole pattern. What they're saying is what this is going to look like when you install it is going to be dependent on whether it's left or right. Okay, These plates are not symmetrical. They're just kicked over in either direction. So if you are actually prepping a door a frame for this header, In drilling and tapping that steel, you need to observe that. Okay. You're going to drill and tap your holes as required for your fasteners. Realistically, your door manufacturer is going to... Um, <laughs> the door is going to be prepped at the factory for this material quite surely. Okay. Um, refer to illustration below and on sheet one for the following notes. Locate A and D dimensions on the center line of the door. Note that the A dimension is measured from the center line of the hinge as shown. So where's our A dimension? So picking up with the A dimension, the A dimension is defined here, and it's basically the vertical axis of pivoting to where your slide, where your channel is going to start in your door. Okay, that's your A dimension. Then the length of your channel is going to be your D dimension. A and D dimension, okay? Mortise the channel as shown if required, meaning if it's not already prepped, please proceed and prep it. So we talked about our B dimension. We talked about our A dimension and our D dimension. The Our C dimension the C dimension is going to be the position of where the arm cutout starts and that is literally this quarter inch deep prep on the push side of the door and that's going to be located They, again, it's from the center line of the hinge to where the beginning of the quarter inch prep and then running the length of whatever the E dimension is. So, What I'd like to do here is go over now. We've defined our A through E dimensions and where they occur. Now it's time to look at the table, the mounting, the, uh, the templating. So, looks intimidating. It's not. There's, there's nothing to this. First of all, what is going to be your degree of opening? Let's just say 100 degree, okay? We want to stop at 100 degree. Okay, now we are dealing with, let's say, 100, and, um, 100 degree. 
we know that we're dealing in mounting group two, so we're only gonna be concerned with the data in mounting group two, just in here, only in here. Now, I'm only really concerned with the 100 degree, which is just here. Okay, so I've got, I have just that page pulled up. Okay, so we're looking at 100 and mounting group 2. Now let's just highlight the line that we're going to be working with. Which is, all, which is going to be this area here. Mounting group 2. You can't really see that, but only, only 103 is all we're dealing with. So just this line. So let's highlight that. I believe this is going to rotate the page. That's okay. Let's rotate. A, B, C, and E dimensions are listed here. What happened to our D dimension? And our D dimension is just simply over in the far column, over here. D dimension for a 103 is 16 and 3 quarter. Right here. So now... You're only dealing with these dimensions. Now we see some asterisks. We should probably look and see what that means. Not to be used with offset pivots. Okay, so a 103 is not to be used with offset pivots. So we are certainly dealing with a butt hung door at this point, which is you know, um, important when you're detailing hardware to look at um, your installation. Uh, as well because you might order these and not ultimately realize that it would not be permissible to install that on the door that you want to have it installed on okay always dig deep on this kind of material now let's finish up this video with a uh, with a review just simply on camera Now, I think we've done a pretty good job going over all the details. Um, that, remember earlier where we talked about the screw package? Those super long ones are going to be used, obviously, for a door, a wood door installation. Um, yeah, they, they give you everything you need. You don't, you don't need any more than what they're already giving you. You're going to have... these epically long screws for the body into a wood door. Then you're going to need four not insignificant wood screws if you're going into a wood frame up into the header, which you sure could be. Then you're going to need these two, I'm quite sure they're three-eighths. That will be for the body uh, into the top of your door. Then of course your four which I believe are quarter 20 for the uh, header portion into a steel frame. Very simple and straightforward. The 
overhead door holders, overhead stops, things of this nature, really begin to represent um, the more complex of, of builder's hardware. You know, concealed vertical rod devices, sure, those are complex, but you have to think of the whole, you have to think of the entire hardware set and how it all relates to each other uh, in terms of working towards compatibility and what you'll be taught or what you'll learn to you know to to appreciate is you need to look at the installation instructions um, because issues are not going to come up if you're just looking at cut sheets oh that's nice i'm going to use that on my door maybe go all the way through look in the uh, full manufacturer's catalog and especially the templating and the um, installation instructions where it applies. Experience and time will teach you those things that are not really compatible with, with each other or how to go about navigating potential conflicts. But you don't want to necessarily learn the hard way if you can avoid it. And, you know, for instance, that 103S, not using it on offset pivots, that would not have been discovered until it was far too late. Um, so going through and looking at the installation instructions and the templating is what's going to allow you to avoid those sorts of uh, scenarios where you just have no reason to cause any sort of trouble. Okay, um, And it's when the arm comes out is where you've got to make that quarter inch prep, that E dimension. Okay, But otherwise, some really simple and straightforward material. I don't know how many decades uh, Glenn Johnson has been manufacturing overhead stops. It has been decades, no doubt, under the umbrella of a legion with their sister companies, Schlage, LCN, Von Duprin, Ives, Zero, uh, others. Um, I have found that there must, uh, I conclude there must be a culture there, a very good technical support. Uh, these folks are extremely anxious to make sure that you are ordering the material correctly and by all means I would recommend you reach out to them if you're unsure of uh, exactly what you need for a given application and don't make any assumptions when it comes to this hardware you know simple material you know what I'm driving at is an overhead stop is going to be used with a door closer okay so you've got to be thinking about that all the time hmm, pardon me all the time and then if you're doing a pair of doors you've got to be thinking about well, are there flush bolts? Is there a bar coordinator? Are there mounting brackets? Are there door closers? Talking about hardware like this, you know, it said earlier, you've got to watch out for automatic flush bolts. What about concealed vertical rod exit devices? So getting the template out to measure everything off and looking where everything's going to fall in line, while it doesn't happen often that you need to do that sort of investigative research, it certainly will happen when you are detailing something, even if it's just a single opening, but you have a lot going on. You need to get the templating out and make sure that it's all going to work. And if it dimensionally doesn't work, then you need to see if there's some sort of accommodation made, a bracket, an adjustment, a revised template. And if all else fails, certainly reach out to the manufacturer's uh, technical support department to navigate those waters. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions on the Glenn Johnson 103S or any other Glenn Johnson overhead stop, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you.